Hey everybody, Ben Somerville Gardner, back again for another episode on Air Espelier. And no, I didn't really mispronounce that. It's it's my own little phrase that I'm trying to spread out. Yeah. So typically when you espelier a plant or a tree, you're going to put li little uh, wires or guide it somehow uh, horizontally and grow it alongside a fence or a building or some way to help uh, boost its productivity. But this right here, this is what I call air espelier. Now what I've done here is I've taken a methylene plum and tried to open its center a bit. And if you look right here, you can kind of see how I've taken the main branch of it and it's split into two and, and rather than try to do an open air uh and an open open center sorry not open air uh an open center on this kind of similar to how i pruned this little peach tree and you can see that you know as you go up you want to spread out your branches and just kind of use pruning to give it a nice open center so that everything goes out well, in this case, I have just taken what it was given to me by the, the nursery and pulled everything down. And this way, as you can see it on this one here, as the branches grow out nice and long, you get your vertical branches. Those will be your, your fruiting branches in the future. And eventually this will form a nice big uh, wine glass or vase shape. Some people say this is the way to go. Other people say the pruning way is the way to go and make sure you get your branches spaced out. Uh, I think the going measurement is around six inches or so. You'd want a branch coming out here, go up about six inches, then a branch coming out this direction. And that is one way that you can go. The main key point is gonna be this right here is going to be a weakness point for the entire tree over its entire life. Any kind of strain or stress, and it could end up cracking, splitting, uh, tearing up your tree. You give me a big bald spot in one part of your little wine glass thing that you got going on. So that might be a concern, and that might be something that you want to avoid. I don't know, but I'm doing some of them with the the pruning method and some with the uh, air espelier. I've got another plum tree right over here, and I'm going to do the same thing to it. Now, something that I want to tell everybody first off, I am not some magically great knot tire. However. I have found a really good knot for this, I hope. So to make these little uh, loops, what I'm gonna do is come down here about uh, yay far. Eh, about yay far. I don't wanna make these uh, too short or long. And then right here, loop this one up. From here, it's gonna go around once and twice, and then back through this little loop right here. What this does is it makes a nice little slippy knot once it gets pulled tight that will hold on real well to this string just kind of wiggle it out and tighten that thing up so that it'll slide but it holds really tight and then from here we're going to put these on the branches tack one down in the ground i usually put one of these knots at each end oh look at that it's like it's magic it's already there because i took it off the other tree put one on the ground one around the branch and it'll look uh, something like this. Make sure we got this thing pulled good and tight because you don't want it to slip off. I hate it when things slip off. And to begin with, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Oh, this is just 550 cord. Of course, everything's in the description for like where to get something like this. Uh, love my paracord, 550 cord. And I'm gonna start off kind of low on the branch because I don't want to put a whole lot of strain on this as I'm pulling each of these branches down. This is going to be a process over the next uh, couple weeks probably and then once we get it set and put in place for I usually even for six to 12 weeks somewhere in there by three four months of it being pulled out it's usually pretty good and once it's looped around kind of close to the base here go ahead and just stick a stake in the ground loop this around pretty simple you can figure that one out once you have your stake in the ground just give this a nice little pull and just apply a slight bit of pressure. To begin with, we do not want to be pulling these things very much because you want to gently, slowly train this thing down. So there's one stake, and we're gonna come back over here. Oh, the other thing is, is as I progress with this video, you'll see that I start with the stake out kind of far because we're going to slowly be moving the whole branch down. Just keep watching, you'll see. So this one right here is gonna come here that's how I measure. 
you missed that first one, but that's how I measure. Ooh, starting to look a little lopsided, isn't it? That's all right. We can just loosen that up just a bit. Got one more, one more branch, and that'll kind of pull it just a bit. Let me show you that trick again. Come out to about two thirds and drop. That's where it needs to go. This one might be a little short. There we go, that's not too bad looking. I kind of like it. And I didn't realize that that's not really doing anything. Ah, I had my name tag. If you haven't seen the video on how to make tree name tags, you're inherently going to lose the one from the nursery or the sun's gonna make it impossible for you to see what's actually written. I got another video on the channel page that shows you how to make these nice little metal tags for pretty much free. So here we go. Uh, you can see that I've, I'm starting out really low on the branch here. I don't want to go pulling all of this straight down because if you do that, the plant's hormones that go along the branch that encourage the growth will then end up pooling right here at that high spot. Think of it as like oil on water. Uh, the, those hormones, those tree hormones or, or the oil, they like to float. So they'll just stay right up here. And then your growth node right up here at the tip will get none of the hormone. It'll stop growing and all of your growth will suddenly pop right here from the middle. Unless that's what you're going for, you know, to each their own. But starting here towards the tree trunk, get it going at about a 40, 45 ish. That is honestly that one right there could probably stay right there. That's exactly how I want it. So in that way you're not getting a, a nice steep angle right there in the, the branch crotch right there because what will end up happening if this is too steep of an angle these will as this gets thicker and this gets thicker it'll bind up it'll choke itself off and you actually break that a lot easier so that that 40 45 is what you're shooting for and over here on this branch you can see that it'll probably start trying to grow out something else over here more than likely uh, but hopefully that'll cap off real nicely right there. This tree, when I got it from the nursery, was honestly, it was, I don't know. This is, what about my hip? That's about three feet or so tall right there. The total tree, when I bought it, was probably going on about eight feet. So there was like another five feet of growth here. It was, it was a massive tree uh, when I first got it. And a few months back, uh, well, I, let's see here, this is June. That's been many months back because I got this in like November. I got it over the winter. Uh, and it was just six and twigs and I cut it off right there shaved the whole thing so that I could uh, do this because this is where I, what I wanted I didn't want a, a super tall tree that I can't reach the fruit on I wanted to be able to reach the fruit so that's why we're doing this and over the next couple weeks I will slowly pull this down here or just stay tuned yeah it is a nice bright day about two weeks later and I'm gonna adjust these just a little bit by pulling them down, these loops down the branch just a little bit. Again, trying to not make that curve pull the, the tree hormones. And wow, that's, hang on. Yeah, see it, it's pulled it down a good bit and it's holding, but it's not quite enough. It may just need a little bit longer right there in that one spot. So we're just gonna pull it down to the branch a little bit and try to not make it go completely horizontal. Apply a little bit more tension to it. There we go. And now our growth node is above this center hump because you don't want it to hump and then come back because that oil and water mix again. So this is now going a little bit more than level. And this one here, let's go ahead and pull this down the branch just a little bit. Yep. And from here, that's looking pretty good. Again, growth node up here above here. And this other side, let's see here. This one's not gonna be able to pull quite so far. Let's get it to about, oops, we need to make that loop bigger. Hang on a second. Pull this thing down just a little bit. Slide these leaves through here. Bigger loops are better. All right, how are we looking there? There we go. Wanna make sure we don't have too much of a hump here. Keep this thing up here above. One other thing I was thinking about, uh, let me show you on the other tree real quick and then I'll show you that one completely as it's done. Okay, so what I have here is a little piece of uh, square tube steel. And honestly, you could use about whatever you want. It's just, it's tube steel. 
nothing too fancy. And I've tied it onto a string here. And something that you can do uh, with these branches just to give them a little bit of extra weight as you're pulling them down, if you don't want to stake them to the ground, you can decorate them like a Christmas tree. Again, just do a little slippy knot like I showed before, going around once and twice and through that little loop. And then from here, that little weight can just slowly pull down on your branch to give you whatever angle it is that you want. Again, move it forward or back uh, based on how exactly you want it to, uh, ooh, I don't know what, what kind of bug you are. Go away, go away. You look dangerous. Whoops, I think he's dead. But this way, it'll just gently put down some pressure. Make sure it's not something too long or you know, like a fragile Christmas ornament. Don't use those either. Because anything that's hanging off your tree here, uh, if it starts whipping around, it could actually cause extra further strain to your tree. So maybe this is a good idea for you in your environment for your particular need. Maybe it's not. Uh, but here's another way that you can just kind of slowly apply downward pressure to help straighten out some of those branches. So once everything gets tied down and you've had it down there for a couple months, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and release these by simply pulling up on my stakes. Ugh. Wow, that's, oh, that's stake. Oh, apparently I used big old huge nails, not stakes. And after a couple months, it just kind of stays that way. And we can just pull this off of here nice and gently like, hopefully not gonna rip a bunch of leaves off. I'm trying to do this one handed and this way, it just grows and it stays just like that. Let me get the rest of this uh, untied for you more gently than what I just did. So you can see how it just, uh, it stays. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and pull up the other stakes or nails. Yep. <laughs> oh no, this is a stake. Hey, thought I had stakes. Oh well, nails work just as well. And then pull this thing out of here. Oh, you just, no need. And now we can reuse these on the other tree. Oh, that's a stake too. Cool. Wonder where all my stakes went. Yep, and it just stays right there. So cool. Ah, nail. Nailed it. And last one. There we go. And there you go. So now it's got its little wine glass shape going here. And it'll continue to grow out, fill in a bit, and hopefully next year we'll have some methylene plums growing on this guy. So thanks for joining me on this video. I uh, hope you learned a lot or at least found it mildly entertaining about how you can train a tree to do tricks. I mean, if you can train a dog, I, mean, I don't see why you can't train a tree to do tricks. Check this one out. Sit. Stay. That's a good tree.